suppose um, you, are, you were abused as a child and it has borne sad fruit for many years. Some uncle sexually abused you or a dad. And somebody is trying to help you, counsel with you, help you to work through the implications of that. And somebody asks you, you think that was the will of God? Now, up until now, I don't know what you would answer to that question. But I, I have just now taken 15 minutes or so to to try to give you a structure of biblical thought to know how to answer that question in a way that not only corresponds with the reality of biblical truth, but with deep needs of your soul right now. The first need you have, and I don't know which one comes first for you. You might be you're different, but there are two needs. One is... I need to believe God hates what happened there. And when he was looking at the abuser, he was saying, don't do that. That is contrary to my will. I command you not to do that. He hates what he sees and will approve of judgment. You need to believe that God is right there disapproving. And secondly, you need to believe that God is sovereign. So sovereign in that moment that he can turn everything for your glorious and everlasting good. And if you try to solve the problem of God's sovereignty, at the moment of crisis and push him so far out of that moment of causality, so far to the edges, you know what's going to happen? You will now be left with no God to help you deal with this and turn it for good. He'll be useless. You've just shoved him off and said, you can't have anything to do with that. Your, your will can't be involved in this. Your governance of the universe cannot oversee this. I cannot have a God who in any way would ordain that this come to pass. And you shoved him so far to the edge of the universe now in your pain for the rest of your life. You're crying out to a God to do miracles. And you've, you've pushed him away. If he, if he can't govern that moment. He can't govern the rest of your life and do, do the miracles you need for him to do. So you need two things. You need a God who disapproves of the ugliness and you need a God who ordains that all things come to pass and is so sovereign he can take everything, including that, and work it for good. And so if, if you try to say there's no sense in which the sovereign God willed that, you will lose God for the rest of your life. So I think those two truths correspond to pretty profound needs that we all have. You pick, pick, it may not be abuse, it just may be the loss of a loved one. It may be disease entering into your life. It may be some painful uh, relational conflict right now in, in marriage or with kids or with friends. You just, you're all in something. And you need two things. A God who can empathize with you as a high priest and hate sin, hates sin. The definition of sin is God hates it. <laughs> and says, don't do it. I forbid it. And you need a God in that moment who is totally sovereign and governing all things so that even the sin being done against you is folded into his purposes for you and you can shine like the sun someday even in spite of that loss, that pain, both of those are needs that I think God meets by being this kind of God.